welcome to another edition of Sticks and Stones. I am your host, Brent Elrod. I think I have two offerings today that are just going to culminate in a stupendous pairing that you are not going to want to miss a moment of. You know, you, you see, it's everything on the internet now. It is like you don't want to miss out. You don't want to miss this. Well, you don't want to miss this. Uh, I am going to be pairing Green Spot Irish Whiskey. For those of you on live stream, Green Spot Irish Whiskey with a diesel Whiskey Row Sherry Cask. I believe there is a whole lot more to the title of that, like Rabbit Hole Sherry Cask. There's a, but anyway... Whiskey Roll, Whiskey Row, Sherry Cask. That's going to be the stick for today. Now, uh, Green Spot is, it kind of has its histories in uh, Jameson's line, I guess you'd say. It goes back a century or more. Uh, but it is, it is all, they're all kind of conglom conglomerated together. And that includes another spirit that has been burning up the airwaves, and that is Redbreast. And I definitely am going to be getting some of that to pair soon. I've actually become a very large fan. Not, you know, uh, I've lost a lot of weight. Uh, but not, I, I am a very large fan of Irish whiskeys. I just really like what they have going on. They're very smooth. They have a, a really nice sweetness to them. Uh, but they still do have, uh, you know, they are, they are whiskey. They're not, it's not infused or anything like that, but there are just a lot of different uh, palate profiles in the different, even though these are uh, the most popular whiskeys are pretty much from uh, Jameson, Jameson's hierarchy. Then you do also have Bushmills out there, which is, I don't know, I think they have been, I think they started distilling whiskey like right around the time Christ was born. They've been at it for, I don't know, a 100,000 years or something. Anyway, um, <coughs> uh, sorry, lost my place. I, I'm running in a lot of, uh, a lot of different directions today. Uh, I think we will find, if we go through today, that uh, the Whiskey Row, I mean the Green Spot, is going to have some nice apple notes, some vanilla, maybe a little toasted oak, uh, and I, I think we're going to be in getting from the uh, Whiskey Row Sherry Cask uh, some more fruits. Uh, probably not the typical cigar with you know a lot of a, lo a large amount of like uh, leather and cedar and, and those kinds of things. Uh, and I think that the Sherry Cask aging that these leaves go through uh, is going to definitely give a nice kind of fruity undertone to the cigar that's going to marry well with the spirit. So see, that's how I kind of do all these things. And most of that was not from my notes. I just kind of like put it all together as I was talking. I knew what I needed to say. Uh, and, and I think if you try these, you're, you're going to sip on the Green Spot Irish Whiskey uh, and, and puff on that uh, diesel whiskey row sherry cast cigar and you are just going to find that there are some great smoky notes of uh, sweet sherry finish and a little bit of uh, uh, leather and cedar uh, a lot of fruitiness kind of some sweetness in there it's really going to make a perfect harmony uh, now the green spot whiskey it is a non-age statement, but part of the history of the spots are that uh, the spots originally amounted to the age. So you had the green, which was like 10 year. You had the uh, yellow, and I think there was another spot in there somewhere, maybe a red. Anyway, uh, but... The way it is done now on the green spot is it is a non-age statement whiskey. However, it is assumed to be somewhere in the seven to 10 year range. So it is 40% alcohol by volume. 
it is aged in X bourbon and X sherry casks. So that should create a really nice uh, tie-in to the Whiskey Row sherry cask cigar, which is one reason I kind of put these two together. Uh, the distillery is Middleton. Again, we know them from Jameson, uh, Red Breast, all that fame. So let's go ahead, dive right on in. Glass, I like that sound. Uh, glass us up some, uh, some of this. Hey, the Irish do know how to make the cork pop. Another, another lovely sound in, in the spirit world right there. All right. Now, for those of you on live stream can see, this is just a beautiful golden color. It's not, uh, it is a little light, but it still does kind of hold uh, the closer to golden color. I, I know I've done some spirits here in, in the recent past that uh, they have been a real light golden, especially some of the Japanese whiskeys. But this does hold just a little bit uh, darker gold hint to it. So let's go ahead and nose it. Now, as I said earlier, this is 40% uh, alcohol by volume, so 80 proof. Uh, so there's not a huge amount of like ethanol in the nose. There is, there is a little bit of a little bit of alcohol to it, but not like you would find in, in some higher proofs. This does really remind you of kind of the older versions of uh, Jameson. Uh, it's got some deep, uh, rich notes that kind of uh, draw you in for more study. I pick up like uh, some notes of hay and maybe honey. Um, I get just bushels of uh, orchard fruit, like apples and maybe even some pears in there. And uh, there is strawberries and cherries. There may be a sprinkling of nuts in there. And then you do pick up a little bit of the sherry from the sherry cask aging. And also maybe just kind of a hint of uh, chocolate. As I said, there's a lot going on in the nose. I mean, this is this is pretty co complex. Probably one of the most complex spirits I've ever nosed on. So I'll let you go where you will with that. Uh, on the palate. Folks, this is just some 80 proof deliciousness. Uh, I get uh, like lemons, a little bit of zing like that, just a little bit of tart on your tongue, uh, like a moist cake, uh, a, a conglomeration of like melons and cream. Uh, the ex bourbon and sherry cask influences also bring in some uh, cereal notes blended with some other, uh, you know, like sweet notes, and that really does create a complex experience on your palate. Uh, there's no like real coating. It's, it's very smooth and easy drinking. Um, and it has a really great mouthfeel on it. Uh, it is just rich and chewy. And I, I think I forgot to uh, show you the legs on it. It may just be a little thin. Not a lot though. I mean, it's got pretty good, pretty decent legs to it. So now the finish, another drink. The finish is short to medium length. Uh, it does have just some really big, robust fruit notes in it, with some toasted oak and uh, a little bit of malt. There's uh, some florally notes in there, along with some baking spices and some more uh, fresh apples, kind of reminiscent of uh, like, uh, and, and, and the spices are like baking spices, not like pepper. Um, 
So it, it's really like uh, spiced apples or an apple cobbler uh, without the crusty stuff on it. I guess you could say with the maltiness, maybe, a, you know. Uh, and everybody, everybody picks up different things. You know, what I get off of a spirit is, may not be, or a stick may not be the same thing that you get. So don't think that, oh, I don't, I don't taste that or I don't smell that everybody's uh, palate and olfactory is a little different. Now, let's move on to the diesel whiskey row. And I may end up looking down a lot, but the camera is coming on my screen right down here, and I'm just kind of watching to make sure I try to, keep my, try to keep my eyes up enough so that I'm not down like this all the time. You don't want to be seeing that. Well, I mean, you might want to be seeing that. I don't know. This is a nice hat. This is a very nice hat. It is a Stetson. No self-respecting Texan is going to wander around with something else on. So, uh, all right, back to the Whiskey Row. Uh, this is a Nicaraguan stick. It is from the Tabacalara A.J. Fernandez Cigars de Nicaragua S.A. S.A. Uh, the filler is a Nicaraguan Habano. The uh, binder is a Brazilian Araparaca. I think I had one of those last week. And the wrapper is a uh, Connecticut uh, Broadleaf from right here in the USA. This particular Vitola is the, uh, I think they call it the Gigante. This is a 6x58 on the ring gauge. It's basically like Toro size, 6x60. Um, but you know, everybody wants to be different. The banding on it is beautiful. I'll get in here and see if you can, uh, there's a little glare on it. But yeah, rabbit hole, they, uh, they kind of did this in uh, conglomeration with the rabbit hole distillery, which I believe is a little bit here northwest of me in uh, North Texas. Um, Visually, it is a beautiful stick. The, uh, the banding, I think, is just beautiful on it. It's, it's got nice colors to it. It's quite a bit of banding. There's a large foot band along with a, uh, a large center band. Uh, I'm going to have to take these off because I can't really see much of the stick for that. All right. Now, this is a medium dark brown uh, wrapper. The seams are, they're visible, uh, minimally visible, but uh, very nice and tight. There is a very minimal amount of uh, veining, a very large double cap. Just making sure, you know, my eyes, I have to like really focus in to see if I can see two or three and it's really kind of hard to tell. I think it's a double cap. It could be a triple. It's just all in where exactly those lines are. It is a hair rough uh, up around the cap. Um, I do detect a little bit of tooth up and down the shaft. No, no. Uh, it does have a nice firm feel to it with just a little bit of give. Now on the nose. We'll say that you're getting just a, a slight amount of alcohol aroma, uh, distillant, distillerant, uh, not rubbing alcohol, from the sherry cask aging which also lends in a little bit of sweetness to it. And I pick up some cedar and some leather and maybe just uh, kind of a hint of earthiness. All right, let's go ahead and give it a cut and cold draw. Y'all, I don't know if any of you are still around from like a long time ago when I first started doing this. Uh, it was probably my first season. I was playing with this off screen. I would, uh, I would open it and then I would close it and I closed it on my finger 
I sliced a nice divot out of my finger. Yeah, don't do that. So I'm having, I'm holding my finger against my, my blue jeans to keep from bleeding all over everything while I'm trying to talk on camera like nothing's wrong. So, yeah, don't do that. All right, I'm very OCD about how I cut these. It has to be nice and perfect. I want it to be, I want it to look great. Mm. Uh, and that one wasn't exactly the way I wanted it. So we're gonna try to, there we go, that's better. It's not, not the best cut I've ever done, but it is pretty good. The first one was uh, very narrow. So, all right, anyway, cold draw. <laughs> it's an exceptionally easy cold draw with that cut I did. I don't know if it's the cut or if it's the cigar itself, but it's almost like drawing through a straw. I get uh, raisins, maybe a little bit of orange in there, uh, kind of some sweet cream. There, there is sherry in there, uh, but it's not as forward. Uh, as it was in the uh, in the nose, uh, but it's kind of more blended together with the other flavors, as opposed to being that you know front forward. All right, Rocky Patel Envoy, Five Torch. Hey, if I believe you're gonna do it, do it right. Pull it up where y'all can see it. As you can see, I'm holding that. Uh, a pretty good distance away from the end of the cigar and just kind of toasting it up. And once I had it, had the foot toasted, then I brought it down closer to the base of the flame and just held it a little away and drew the flame into the stick. Uh, you don't want to bury the cigar into the flame. You'll wind up, for lack of a better term, overcooking it, uh, and it can you know, just kind of mess up the burn. You don't want to do that. If you're gonna, if you're gonna spend, you know, ten dollars on a stick, you want it to burn right. And you know, you can always get the flame closer, but once you overdo it, you can't go back and change it. So. It's better to start out and work in than go in and figure out you screwed it all up. Trying to see how that's coming out on camera. And you should be able to tell there is a tremendous amount of smoke coming off of this stick. Howdy, I see the comment. I have no idea how I can reply to it. I actually have my soundboard sitting on top of my keyboard. So, got a lot of stuff going on out here. And I tell you what, I, I, I love this stick already. This is another one, like last week's, that it is uh, courtesy of my uh, military buddy, my, my combat veteran. We were deployed together, buddy Roy Farrell and, uh, and Tracy. They, they found these at Talladega, just kind of hanging around, you know, waiting on the race to start or whatever. I always think of uh, uh, Jeff Dunham. Well, he had you know, a ventriloquist comedian. He had you know, one of his dummies up there, and it's like, they're making a left turn. They're making another left turn. You know, it's funny. Anyway, let's get back to business. This is a, I mean, a really good cigar. It puts out a copious amount of smoke. Uh, I get raisins or maybe something kind of like a raisin pudding. You know, with just a little bit of uh, a little bit of sweetness added into it, um, there is some pepper. Uh, there is a really nice aged wood, you know, like a like an an old library from 17, 1800s, or you know, those, those the really old churches in New York City that the wood has been there for 300 years. 
uh, that kind of you know, rich, robust, aged wood. I love that. Or an old bar. Some of those too. I went to uh, I went to a bar in uh, Manhattan uh, many years ago when I was uh, stationed up there in the Navy, and uh, it was the bar that uh, a lot of the revolutionaries uh, planned uh, all of their shenanigans there in New York City at. So there's a plaque on the corner outside. It's been there uh, like 350 years. Like, that's a lot of beer. Or whiskey or whatever they drank back then. All right, let's try them together. Mmm, man, that is just some really great, uh, like, sweet notes all blending together. You've got the, or the uh, orchard fruits, like the apples, maybe a little pears, mixed with the oranges, raisins, uh, sweet cream, and just enough pepper and spice to kind of underpin the whole thing. I mean, it's really coming together as a great smoke and we are that far in there we're like a, a stack of a stack of a dollar stack of quarters so so i'm watching the smoke production on the on the uh, camera because you know when i will i will puff on a cigar and i will look and i'll be like that's a lot of smoke coming off this cigar but then you look on the camera and not all of it shows up you know, it's kind of like those uh, ghost hunting shows. You know, you watch those and they'll be like, ooh, and you're like, I didn't see nothing. <laughs> but they saw it. So look at that. The smoke is still hanging in the glass. Man, that is awesome. <sighs> I tell you what, that, uh, that green spot. That's a pretty good spirit right there. Uh, this kind of spirit. I love the ghost hunting shows. There was one. I can't remember the name of it now. There's so many of them out there anymore. But they were, uh, what was the name of the, it's like Idle, Idle Wild or something like that. It was a, uh, an old like plantation home uh, down in Louisiana somewhere. And, uh, they had all. They were all outside. They had their ghost coach or whatever they called it, their uh, 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 RV that uh, they had all their. That's where that was their command center. And uh, the way the story went, the rest of them were like outside taking a snack break or whatever. And one of them was in there, and he saw something on one of the cameras. And it could be creative editing. I'm not saying all this, you know, I'm sure all this, anyway. Uh, but there was, clear as day, probably a half to three-quarter transparent image. Uh, it was, you could tell it was a woman in like a long, that kind of looked like maybe a nightgown or one of the old, you know, from the 17, 1800s, the women wore the long dresses. And it just passed from one side of the kitchen through the other and the camera was looking through this big wide doorway that was probably 10 or 12 feet wide. And uh, the thing was, is it wasn't walking. It just did one of these. I was like, wow. If that if that was real, that's, that's a great catch because you don't see that kind of stuff. Most of them, they talk about all this great evidence they got and you're like, ah. You know, whatever. It's kind of like the Bigfoot show. You know, they go out looking for Bigfoot, and they never find him. Maybe, maybe Bigfoot has uh, Comcast or whatever, and he knows that they're out there, and he's like, no, nah, I ain't going in that part of the woods this weekend. We'll go over to this place. It's kind of like, you know, when you find out that there's a, you know, something big happening at one place and you're like, oh, I'm going to stay away from that because there are going to be way too many people there. My Bigfoot probably doing the same thing. He probably got his iPhone out going, yeah, I'm, I'm not going over there. 
Hmm. All right. Well, for those of you on the podcast part, the audio only, I'm going to uh, put you all on pause while I go ahead and burn this down to the halfway mark. For those of you on live stream, just hold tight. Howdy, folks. I am back here at the half. Uh, as I was talking to the live stream folks, the uh, the spirit has or the uh, the su- <laughs> I'm just getting all kinds of messed up. The stick has brought in some uh, like molasses, maybe a little bit of vanilla, uh, maybe even some slight notes of chocolate in there as well. Uh, it's still a really really good match for this uh, green spot. This is an excellent spirit. First time I've tried it. It is wonderful. It is fruity. It's sweet forward without being too sweet. Um, and uh, it retains just enough spice, you know, to, to keep you coming back. Uh, I, I am very pleased thus far with this, uh, uh, with this Perry. And there has been a uh, uh, some waviness and I had to touch up a little bit a time or two could it could have been the, the wonky cut that I gave it when I was trying to talk about how specific I wanted to be about my cuts and then I screwed it up uh, but the cigar itself is really performing very well and I love the palette uh, I, I love the smoke production I love the draw on it uh, it is it is a short to medium finish and probably on the shorter side same with the spirit it doesn't hang in very long uh, but it just keeps you coming back for more so i am going to go ahead and burn this down the rest of the way and i will come back and give you my final thoughts howdy folks i am back this was a really really enjoyable experience Uh, i loved the uh, the green spot irish whiskey uh, with its its fruitiness and its gentle uh, or its sweet gentle profile uh, it blended very well with the uh, diesel uh, sherry cask uh, in the last half you know right around the halfway mark we I thought I had a little bit of chocolate coming in there too well it fell away uh, and it got a little more robust with uh, some uh, some earthiness and some notes of uh, cedar and, and oak kind of moving forward uh, I would give the green spot a 94 whiskey stones. I really thought it was that good out of a, out of 100 whiskey stones. I was very impressed with it. Uh, I would give the stick, I'd give the stick 88 out of 100. It is a really good cigar, and it is definitely worth the smoke. Uh, they paired very well together, and I think you could probably uh, pair these with, with other uh, other matchings uh, very easily um, and this was an, an excellent afternoon an excellent way to spend an afternoon because I am now just about as ready as I could be I guess for starting the new week you know what I mean you know what I'm saying no rag rats right All right. I hope you have enjoyed this episode as much as I have enjoyed bringing it to you. Uh, Please let me know your thoughts, what you think about this episode or the show in general. Leave me comments. Uh, Please hit the like, subscribe, share buttons. That way you not only only know when I drop new content, but you're spreading the word amongst all your friends. Uh, That's how we grow. Uh, That is the easiest way for us to grow. Uh, And I love growth. I'll just leave that right there. Um, I've got some great pairings, matchups coming up. Um, If you happen to have a stick or a spirit or a pairing that you would like to see, reach out to me on any of the social medias, comment on this this episode, whatever you'd like. Uh, You can pretty much find me anywhere. Uh, I am on Amazon, including the shopping site. You can actually uh, search for the show, sticks-in-stones, S-T-O-N-E-Z, 
in the uh, search bar of the Amazon shopping app and you will find the show. And it is free. You don't even have to pay for it. Isn't that awesome? So you can see, uh, you know, all the different, you can listen to all the different episodes on your uh, Amazon Music uh, platform. Couldn't think of the word there. Uh, speaking of platforms, I am on uh, Pandora, Spotify, Apple, uh, Podbean, Sprecher, YouTube, and wherever you happen to be watching and or listening today. So, uh, be sure to tune in. I'm, I, I'm usually doing this every Sunday afternoon. The time may kind of vary depending on what's going on. Uh, but I always try to make time for you folks. Uh, be sure to go to our website, sticksandstones.com. All one word, all small letters, S-T-I-C-K-S-N-S-T-O-N-E-Z.com. Uh, there you can find on the front page, you can find links to uh, a, a bunch of our affiliates, Keeper's Heart Whiskey, love those folks, uh, Total Wine, Cigars International, uh, Carhartt, Fanatics, uh, all, I have all kinds of affiliate uh, affiliates that I'm, I am, I am, what's the word, cropping, I guess that's it. Um, and you can also find links to prior episodes, uh, blog posts. I really need to get a blog post made. I haven't made one in, I don't know, a couple of weeks, I think. So, uh, But I try to have something on the blog post for everybody. I've done the Boston Tea Party. I've done spirits. I've done sports. I've done cigars. You can find a little something there that you might find entertaining, no matter what you're looking for. So until we get to be together again. Keep your sticks dry, your stones cold, and have a great day.